Today on CBA On Demand, we speak with County Superintendent Ted Alejandre talking about how we're coming together as a community to help educate our kids and some resources for parents during this very unique time. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We really appreciate having you, especially in this time when everything, especially education, is being re-envisioned. Tell us a little bit about your leadership style and how you've gotten through this challenge. Well, thank you, and it's great to be here. And, and it's just a privilege for me to be superintendent for San Bernardino County. I've had my entire career here in San Bernardino County with Rialto and San Bernardino and Yucaipa Cala Mesa, and now my 13th year at the county office. And what we really tried to strive at the county office is to be a huge service provider for our districts, to really be the liaison with state agencies, with other um, agencies throughout the county and the region, so to, to support our school districts as they strive to provide the best programs for students. We also run our own instructional programs, but really the needs for districts vary because we have some very small districts and we have some very large districts, 22,000 square miles in San Bernardino County. So as a county office, we really try to pull together the resources and build that collaboration to support districts in all of our 406,000 students in San Bernardino County. We were talking a little bit earlier and you were mentioning a specific area of instruction that you your office oversees and that's in in regards to your work that you do with the probation department and some of these alternative education methods. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, county office, uh, we are required to support students in alternative ed, and the students that are in the programs that the state uh, requires county offices to support are students that are on probation, they're referred to probation, they're detained in juvenile hall, or they're um, mandatorily expelled from school districts. And so these are individuals that have struggled throughout their high school experience. They've had many obstacles. They have environments in the home that are really challenging. And they come into our programs and they immediately start to interact with people that want to give them TLC, want to give them additional support. They're small environments of learning. Our relationship with the sheriff and with probation has been phenomenal because they go above and beyond to support our students. In fact, we started a graduation program five years ago because we've never had a graduation program for these individuals, but we really wanted to give them that possibility. So we worked with the state to get the certification so that we can issue a high school diploma. And our first one had 36 graduates, and this last one we had had 185. Wow. But the first one we had, we had it at Sturges in San Bernardino. It was full of people. Many of the families that came to watch their students graduate were the first high school graduates in their family. And the best dressed were the ones in juvenile hall because probation and others got them suits and shirts and ties, and they were so proud of their accomplishments. So it's something that we really take a lot of pride in. I love that you mentioned that um, because SEBA also um, represents probation, probation corrections officers. And so, you know, it makes us feel a sense of pride to hear that our members are really invested in the education and maybe in places that people think law enforcement wouldn't be so invested. And it really comes out because when you see students that have had those challenges in school and you wonder how can they be expelled, what did they do? Because when they come in our programs and they get that attention and they start seeing what options they have, you realize that for many students in our county, especially ones without means, they really don't know how to access information. They don't know what possibilities there are. And adults from probation, adults from our teaching staff, and from county schools, just have those conversations with them. Say, well, what do you want to do when you finish your program in high school? What do you want to think about getting into? What interests you? And they start to realize they have some skills and they have some, you know, really um, talents that they can move forward on. And when they bring that out, these students just make a 180-degree turnaround and start moving in the right direction. And that's what we get a lot of pride from is they're really seeing them have accomplishments. But it's a team effort. We could not do it without probation. We could not do it without counselors. We not do without the support staff that really provides a team approach to every student. That's one of the things that I think being in San Bernardino County, you know, sometimes I think I'm spoiled because we really do have that collaborative, it feels like, at least to me, in the circles that I run in, you know, we, we collaborate, education and, and law enforcement and faith base and, you know, all the aspects of society. We just have this sense of coming together to do what's best for the community. Um, it's really nice to not be so divided like we see in other places, especially right now. We started uh, working with the county, started their countywide vision. Uh, we were really keenly, um, we were very involved in that, and we wanted to be a part of that uh, in an important way. And so we worked with Cal State to develop our Cradle to Career Roadmap that really talks about what are the key indicators for success 
from zero to five, K-12, and post-secondary, and not just from academics, but also from a social-emotional perspective. And because all of our districts have adopted that, to really be successful, there has to be this collective impact approach to that, really working with our agency partners, with our county partners, and others to really make that happen for each one of our students. And so, for example, when you look at work-based learning and career opportunities, Sheriff's Department stepped up right away and said, how can we be part of this? So we have CSI, we have all of these uh, aviation, we have all of these law enforcement careers that are presented to high school students. And when they get involved, the next thing you hear from students is, I want to get into that as soon as I finish high school. So to build that pipeline into careers that are so important for our community really makes a huge difference. I remember those programs um, when I was at the department. And the the best thing is that it's a day where you interact with students that has nothing to do with, you know, getting in trouble or any of the enforcement part of the job. It's all about the education and, and the opportunities in it and the interactions between the teachers and the students and the sheriff's department personnel and the students. It is incredible. And, you know, where we've seen students struggle um, as they complete what's called their A through G requirements. Those are the courses they need, the 15 courses in high school to be able to apply to Cal State. Where they struggle is in science and math. And the sheriff's department was so great because they focused their pathways on science and math areas. So when kids go through CSI, when they go through aviation, and they see the importance of math and science, but more importantly, they see how it relates to the content, then they really start to understand those subject matters better and they get motivated to really learn it well and be more successful in passing those courses. So now they have those 15 courses that they can then apply to Cal State. So those are some key key goals that we have and the partnerships have been crucial for it. That innovation, getting creative, I mean, we see that having to happen now Mm -hmm. just Mm -hmm. because learning and well, life in general has been kind of thrown for a loop mm-hmm. with the with the pandemic, um, and with our partnership with SEBA and uh, the county superintendent schools, we have now re envisioned our back to school shop with a cop, which you are a huge part of. Our two offices have worked really well together to highlight teachers and what they're doing right now. So, can you speak a little bit about the support that they need the teachers in the classrooms now? Teachers go above and beyond. Many get their own supplies. They find their own resources. They spend a lot of their own time to make the classroom a place where students can really thrive. And when you have the opportunity to get these additional resources from SEBA, uh, it just shows the partnership and the appreciation. You know, I've I've been in classrooms where I've talked to a number of teachers and other staff, and they really appreciate just the SROs that they work with on the campuses because they come from a positive perspective and building relationships with teachers and students. And so a program like this just really reinforces it and strengthens that bond that we have throughout our county. And so we're just really thankful for it and looking forward to having those days we go out to the school to see the teachers in person. You know, I really have a heart for the teachers because Mm -hmm. their entire, the way they do their Mm -hmm. profession, now they have to figure out how to, you know, get the kids' attention over a screen. And, you know, our heart really goes out to their creativity and all the Mm -hmm all of the effort they're putting into this new way. Do you have any advice for parents who are trying to navigate this with their children? Absolutely. You know, when we uh, started the COVID back in March, the first thing we did is realize there was going to be need for resources, not just for teachers, but for parents. And so on the front page of our website, we have a distance learning tab with distance learning, with resources, with special education, so that people can go right there and they just get into those areas where the resources are all listed and identified for the groups. It's a wonderful set of resources that can support parents because we have many parents and they talk about the challenges of their students you have four or five kids in a home potentially one computer you have a lot of noise you have a lot of interruptions how do you give the quiet spaces and the learning spaces to students so they can effectively work towards your goals uh, based on the requirements from their teachers and so really to try to provide support to parents on options they have and resources they can utilize and I know that as uh, the virus starts to subside which we hope will be sooner rather than later um, there are some districts that are looking at bringing small learning groups of students in because there's that availability if they meet the state criteria and while we have 32 of our school districts distance learning we do have one district Lucerne Valley that actually has kids coming back physically oh, wow. because they received a 
waiver from the state. And so they have two cohorts of students. So the class sizes are small to ensure social distancing. They all have their face masks. The teacher has a shield. They have sanitizers and thermal cameras to look at the temperatures. So they're really taking um, utmost precautions to ensure the safety of students and staff. But everybody wants kids to come back. We just want to make sure it's safe when they do. And parents feel the same way. You know, we want... We're all longing for that in-classroom feel, but of course it has to make sense and it has to be safe. But was there something that I didn't ask that you want to touch on for the audience? Again, it's just team effort. We all working together. We all want to support each other. And the support of the sheriffs, the support of SEBA, the support of our county agencies, again, is just so helpful for us to accomplish what we strive to do. We are very proud to be part of that partnership. And again, very grateful that you were here. Thank you so much. Sure. Thank you.